well. Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig were released by China over the weekend after almost three years of imprisonment. The two Michaels were released in what would seem to be a prisoner swap almost immediately after Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou reached a deal with U.S. Justice Department that guaranteed her release back into China. Over 1,000 days ago, Meng was detained in Vancouver over a U.S. extradition request. In what is now being alleged as a form of retaliation by China, coined hostage diplomacy, the two Michaels were shortly detained by Chinese authorities on suspicion of espionage. However, the Chinese government insists that the two cases are unrelated. Joining me to discuss this further is my co-host, Simone Vani. Hey, Hel Simone. Hello. Hi, thanks for joining us. Glad to be back. So as you know, China released Canada's two Michaels following the release of Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou. In your opinion, is this a coincidence? It can be, can it? I mean, I feel like it was the timing was too close for it to be a coincidence. Too close? You mean they were in the air at the same time? Yeah, uh, reports are that the Michaels were airborne within hours of Meng reaching, I think it was a deferred prosecution agreement with the U.S. government, so... Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, there's a lot for it. To, there's a lot of coincidences for it to be happening if it was all just one big coincidence. Too much of it. <laughs> yeah. What did China have at stake with the arrest of Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou? That is, why did they care about her arrest? I want to say their tech sector, which mm -hmm. is almost always constantly in battle with U.S. firms. Uh, she was arrested the same year her company came or over overtook Apple as the world's second leading manufacturer of smartphones. So according to reports, I think they were saying that the country saw it as the U.S. government's conspiracy mm -hmm. to repress their high-tech companies and to obstruct China's development. I mean, I, I mean, I can see why they'd be threatened, to be fair. I agree with you. Why do you think that China has been so insistent that the arrest of Meng Wanzhou and the subsequent arrests of the two Michaels are unrelated? Well, to be fair, it would look really bad on them for thousands of reasons if they just come out and be like, oh, well, tip for tat, you took one of mine, I'm going to take two of yours. So I guess they had to put their own way or their own twist as per to why they were arresting the Michaels. But it can't be that simple, can it? Like, they let them go almost instantly after, so... Yeah, there's there's so many reasons that China is very touchy about hostage diplomacy these days. Yeah. These days, and, and optics are really important for them in, yeah. in that respect. And if they're arguing for it to not be related, then you would have thought they would have waited at least a couple of weeks or months. Maybe? Yeah, but there's so many reasons why they wouldn't have because Canada obviously wants to secure. They want they want to know that the Michaels were going to be back in. At this, yeah. You know, if maybe there, if there was that part of the agreement. Maybe they just wanted to kind of start mending their relationships with both Canada and the U.S. as quickly as they can. Maybe? That's a great point because yeah. they realized because of all the allyship between Canada and the U.S., maybe they realized uh, that um, what they do to Canada, they also do to the United States because Biden actually was uh, the one who leveraged a lot of the negotiation yeah. to free the Michaels. So yeah. China in that way had had to because they were up against Biden and in in that respect, Canada does have uh, the U.S. to thank for that, although they kind of got us into this situation yeah. in the first place. But I think it was under the Trump government that the arrest happened in the first place. Yes. And then he kind of just, oh, just went bye-bye so, and left Biden to do the rest of it. So. Yeah, like many yeah. other things. Well, <laughs> That's a whole other That's panel. That's a whole other discussion. panel. Multiple panels for that matter. Yes. <laughs> Well, how do you think that the Canadian government has handled China, particularly in this case? I mean, I think they've done all right. I feel like I'm not very too well versed with this to be able to answer that, but their political and diplomatic relations definitely took a really swift nosedive. But then on the other hand, the trade relations are doing very extremely well. So 50-50 maybe? Yeah, and I don't think it was all related to this two Michaels case. Um, it, it was also related yeah. to to COVID mm -hmm. and a few of the other things that, that Trump put in place yeah. again, all the yeah. tariffs and taxes on trade that he put on there for a hot minute. Mm. Um, so I think they might be on the road to recovery now with this. It looks a little bit more optimistic. Mm. In your opinion, what kinds of implications will the release of the two Michaels and Meng Wanzhou have on the China-Canada relations? Can't be that ca simple, can it? Like, it, maybe it will turn out to be for the better, maybe not, but like, 
You know, they say if you break a glass, it's never going to be the same again, right? Mm -hmm. I guess we got to keep in mind that China is, ri is a global rising power, and regardless of how we move forward, we got to be very careful with how we do. Yeah, they're here to stay. <laughs> Um, so we do have to be careful about how yeah. we deal with them. And this is, I mean, it is optimistic. We have them back. We're just happy that they're home at this yeah. point. Who knows what the Michaels will reveal to us in the time to come about what happened during their time in China. I'm actually kind of looking forward to hearing their version of this. Yes, To see too. what what happened, what they were told, or what they went through for that matter. And what they can tell us. Who knows what is... Oh, that's true. What kind of control they're under now. Now, that's very true. Mm. It's another panel as yeah. well. <laughs> Do you think that other Canadians may face a similar threat as the two Michaels did in China in the future? I think so, yeah. I feel like this incident sets a weird precedent in the sense that if they've done it once, they can do it again. And clearly, they China has shown no qualms about arresting innocent, innocent, I guess, people for that matter. Or we don't know what the situation was, or once we hear what the Michaels have to say, we'll be able to tell more. But if they've shown that they can do it once, I'm sure they can do it again. Yes, and they may try to push the boundaries on it next time. Who knows? <laughs> it's certainly instilled fear in a lot of people, yeah. and with that can come great power and a lot of control. Yeah. So we'll see in the time to come. Yeah, I was doing some research in that sense too, and a lot of companies are now not sending their officials to China. Yeah. So, Is that a smart move, in your opinion? To not send them, maybe, until maybe the air gets cleared up a bit more, because it's still very fresh, right? So yeah. I think it might be take a while for mm -hmm. them to be comfortable again, if at all. Fair enough. China's foreign ministry spokesperson, Hua Chunying, has said that Meng Wanzhou fell victim to political persecution. Do you agree with this assessment? I want to say yes. As we were just talking, I've, uh, they're saying, reports are saying that the U.S. orchestrated the whole thing um, as a conspiracy to kind of attack their tech sector. So, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe yes, maybe no. What does Canada need to do moving forward to ensure that these kinds of situations do not repeat themselves? I Once again, not very well versed with this, but I feel like they should take into consideration about what has happened in these past three years, kind of reflect upon it, and move forward accordingly to what is better for the country. Okay, so kind of look at the patterns, the things yeah. leading up to it, and just kind of drive defensively around yeah. these sorts of situations. Yeah. yeah, to just learn from what happened or just draw lessons from it for that mm -hmm. matter, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see how it goes. Well, thank you, Simone, so much for all your thoughts on this, and thank you to the viewers at home for tuning in. This is Ava Blackwell, and you're watching the International News Channel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date on all of the latest content.